Last off. Alrighty then. Ah, a little early. Which is fine. That'll give people a, uh, give people a chance to show up. Okay. Let's see. Live now. Or at least so it seems. Oh, Anyways, <laughs> doesn't matter. Hello, all YouTube viewers, mini wargaming viewers, and whoever else decides to join me. Um. Welcome to a live build of the Signar Stormwall. This, uh, this guy. Probably should have put that here. But, um, anyways, it's a, it's a nice, nice, where is that? Alright, this guy. You can see that. It's a nice, big model, it's huge, um, but I want to get this guy put together as soon as possible. I want to paint him because he looks awesome. Um, let me just say this build, first and foremost, is probably <clears throat> is going. I'm, I'm dedicating this build to um, Dan from Mini War Gaming because I miss him. I miss him a lot. Anyways. But as you can see here, I've got the ability to knock the camera around. But anyways, here I have all the pieces of Stormwall already laid out. Uh, what I've done already is I've washed all the pieces, so they're all clean. I wash them in a soapy water mix. That's all it really needs. And... I've cleaned up most of the mold lines, if not all of them. No, I'm just doing that because I can. Um, with a few exceptions, uh, the only other things I've done is attach the lightning pods to their bases. And I just did that with some good old, good old zappa gap, uh, which I'm going to be using for most of this model. Uh, they very smartly built this model so that it looks like none of the major pieces need to be pinned. So that's um, that's a benefit for us, definitely. I'm actually uh, I'm very excited about that. Is, um, I've got the instructions here in front of me. It's very, very straightforward in how to do this. I'm uh, probably going to be building from the bottom up. So, starting with the, the assembly of the legs. And going from there, however these legs are assembled. I'm not even quite sure. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. No. Where do these pieces go? Not quite sure. I think I have these backwards. Anyways. Start taking a look. 
properties. Oh, okay. And see, like that will go together like that. And it fits right there and right there. And it's actually already a pretty snug fit all on its own. Which is awesome. But uh, there are a couple things I do want to mention about this model. Um, for the most part, private share press models are come out very well done. You don't need to do very much to them to make them look right. If you uh, look at this piece, you can see that there is a little bit of a misshaping up here. It's stretched this way a bit. But that's okay. It's not going to be that noticeable. There's also some little areas in here that got a little extra flashing that it just it's destroyed a little bit of the detail on the model. But uh, other than that, it's come out really nice. Um, I'm probably in a few of these spots going to just hit him with either a milliput or a uh, Vallejo plastic putty. Just just to make it a little bit smoother there. In fact, um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use some plastic putty right now and some sculpting tools to work it in there. I need something to put the plastic putty on. Just give me a second. I need a palette for the plastic putty, and I have a box full of little stupid palettes that I can use. Yeah, I'm a nerd. Anyways, uh, plastic putty. See this stuff comes out like that. It's really easy to use, really easy to work with. Let's get some on here and try to smooth out some of these areas. Let's get some in there. Help build up some of the Areas in here that are now poorly detailed. Oh, there's some spots I'll leave alone just because they're going to be a pain and a half to deal with. And I'm not that good at the sculpting part, and you see I'm just pushing it into the little gaps on the model. And this is a really simple, easy process. You can do it yourself. Uh, before you start painting the model, before you prime it and everything, just make sure you sand down these parts so that they're even again. I will, I pr I'm not going to do it live, but I will be doing that myself. Uh, and I will be recording the painting of this, because uh, the camera you're seeing now, I just got an extension cord for it in the mail today, and I can um, finally... Uh, take it to my work area for recording. So I definitely will start actually doing the painting tutorials that I've been wanting to do for a while now. Because uh, even though I do the commission stuff, I always I, I, uh, I very strongly believe in painting your own army when you have the drive and the ability to. Gives you a level of the word I'm going for. Intimacy with your with your figurines that you can't get any other way. 
Now, I do, I do reserve the fact that that is only for those of you who wish to. And I exist for the rest of them that don't wish to. And my clients are hap happier for it. So they'd rather play the game because they can't paint or don't want to paint or whatever the reason is. One of my clients is they don't want to paint. The other is they can't. I think I know one who can't, I should say. His, eye, uh, his eyesight's gone so bad that he cannot paint anymore. Anyways, I'm uh, pretty sure I'm done filling the gaps in there. So, uh, that will get sanded down. Right. Anyways. Now, the arduous journey of the assembly. And I am once again missing where these go. I do not see them in the picture. Yeah, oh well. I mean, worst case scenario with these pieces is that they, what, don't get attached? I don't know. They look like they might go on here, maybe. I don't know. Uh, they'll find attachment spots. I'm sure they will. Or it might be they're supposed to be uh, around where those go. I don't know. But, um, anyways, as I showed you before, just do a dry fit before we glue anything in place. Because you do not, do not want to dry some, uh, glue something in place just to regret the decision to do it later. Just make sure. Use the other foot. Hmm. Okay. Alright. Yeah. They have to be glued that way. They have to be. So, I'm going to kick out some of my Zappa Gap. You can see it's a little bit crusty, but that's okay. And there's a slot in here. We're going to do it all... Let's, see. Okay, let's just see how this is in there again. Okay. So where we're going to be putting glue is there's a slot in here that needs glue, and then... Just spotted something. Get that flat. Then you're going to want to put the glue along the uh, back here and into the hole in the bottom here. And oh, I just realized where these go. This goes on the feet. I think. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Yeah, these goes on the feet. <laughs> I'll do that next. Just get these on first. So I'm going to apply glue in those spots, those before mentioned spots. And get this build underway. And if you notice a little bit of gapping in there, that's not going to be too problematic. It looks still very, very metallic that way. It's nothing I would worry about. And we're not going to be putting it on the base quite yet. I'm going to wait until after I'm done uh, with the rest of the assembly to do that.
Yeah, again, we'll put the glue in those exact same spots that I pointed out on the last leg. And get those put together. Okay. And that'll fit together nice and snug. All right, as you can see. will fit in there like that. And that is how the storm wall will stand. Of course, you want to make sure when you're doing that not to knock things out of the places you were gluing them. So I did, I did just make that mistake. Um, I'm going to leave those to dry for the second. Uh, what I can do is start trying to get these boot pieces on. As far as I can tell, they're exactly the same, so it doesn't look like it matters which side I do them. It does matter. Because that one doesn't seem to be fitting. But they're exactly the same. fit. All right, this this one's only got a glue spot right at the tip of the foot right there, so that is where I'm going to be putting the glue. Because there really isn't any other place to do it. Move the middle put out of the way and bring the Zappagat closer. Um, I know Austin from Rush for Hire uses accelerant. I do not have any, so I will not be using any. Okay. Anyways, you gotta hold that in place until it decides it doesn't want to keep moving anymore. Then it's just as long as you let the glue set, it should stay. Again, we're gonna dry fit this piece, this nice big foot front part. Fits nicely. Awesome. And we're already well on our way to making a Stormwall Colossal. So I've seen this in action in the uh, WOG Bat Reps when Dan played. So, um, yeah. Those were cool. Obviously, no, I haven't, I've never played um, a game with. I keep, got, I keep getting these backwards. I've not yet. I get to play a game with these pieces, um, or with a colossal, I just say. But um, yeah, I got that one. I've also got here uh, something that I can't really put together too much before painting this because there's so many pieces and so close proximity, and so many little gaps in there that I want to get paint in. But uh, I've got a. Um, Circle Oberos World Wraith World Wrath. Yeah. But it's a really nice big model. It's beautiful. I love it. And also something I'd like to do on a live build is um, I've also got this big guy. Yes, I am I'm, I'm channeling Dan today. Very much channeling Dan. I got my workshop vlog. Uh, for a studio orc army I'm building. And let me tell you, uh, orcs, orcs is awesome. 
from what I've seen of them. I have so far highly enjoyed what I have learned about works. Um, anyway, while that's doing what it's doing, we could take some time, spend some time, and look at a few other pieces that are going to go together. And hopefully not drop them off the table as you do this. Uh, okay. This is the wrist piece. Wrist piece of the hand, gauntlet, whatever. But make sure they fit into their places. And whether or not it might be better to switch them, it doesn't look like it matters. But, you know, they've got a gap right here. They just fit it right in. And you put it right on. Uh, I'm going to... Not put glue just down in there, but I'll just put glue around the area which it's going to connect. Because the more, glue, the more surface area you can cover with the glue, the better the bond is going to be. Um, there are, if it wasn't, if these pieces weren't so light that I'm putting together right here, uh, something I would recommend would be to score up the pieces that are going to be connecting that you can't see. Uh, you know, just take an exacto knife, whatever you're using for things, and, you know, uh, where's a good surface to show this? Like, in here, if this part was where it's connecting, take it and score across it, and then score across it this way to make a hex pattern. Because that'll give the glue more um, area to hold on to. But um, these big resin pieces usually don't need it. Because they're, for the most part, fairly, fairly light and capable of staying on with each other. Sad to see I only got two viewers right now. I'm pretty sure one of them's me. <laughs> but anyways, uh, if you're a viewer right now, you feel free to ask questions. I am always willing to answer, always willing to talk. I love talking to people. Especially about war games. This stuff is awesome, and it's my life. And I want to make it a much larger part of my life. Which is why I started doing commission painting. And I'm amazed at just the feedback I've gotten from the clients I have had. It's given me so much confidence as a painter. And I just, I feel, I feel really good right now. Where I am in life. Because of it. Okay. This part should be dry enough now. Make sure... Make sure this is facing up. Yes. Make sure we have the right way looking the right way. Because if it's not facing the right direction, it's going to be a problem. Okay. Make sure the fit is right. Okay. Okay. It's a little awkward. The fit is a little awkward. But that's why I don't have it on the base yet. Because you see the gap right there? I can put something underneath that for the foot to sit on. And that will negate that entire thing. So that's why we're not doing it on the base yet. <clears throat> uh, this is probably the only part I was a little bit nervous about. I actually am going to do the scoring in here. 
and on the metal piece, because this is quite literally the only part that's really heavy. That has a really small connection. And anything I can do to improve that connection will help. By the way, when you're cutting, cut away from yourself. If you can. I know I'm not, I'm not, I don't listen to myself very often. Which I guess is a bad rule to follow. I'm wondering why I decided to do a live build. I just like, ah, I want an excuse to build this thing, and I live build sounds like a good excuse to me. I was hoping also maybe I'd help give some people some instruction. Because this basically is an assembly tutorial because they don't have step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this. I always get some super glue in there. Make sure it's facing the right way again. And fit it in there. I said if I had accelerant right now, this is probably a place where I would use it, though I'd if it, uh, all the um, area that it's being glued in is covered up the, as much as it is in this right here, I don't know if accelerant would do anything at this point, other than make a mess. By the way, fair warning, not that I've heard from experience, but from I've heard from horror stories, if you're using um, super glue accelerant, do not make sure you do not have any super glue on your fingers, because it will feel like you have a fire on your fingertips. Be very careful of that. It seems like that. That's hold. I'm gonna give it another minute to dry before I try putting on the next piece or the other leg. And in the meantime, I'm gonna get a few of the little knobs, knobbly bits, put onto. the main body. Um, I'm talking about these things. The arcs, nose, Teslas, coils, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they all go on the body as such. And I don't think there is any difference between any of them, so I am just going to start placing them. Ah. By the way, I know in all sorts of tutorials you see a very clean glue ends. So let me tell you, no matter how hard you try, in reality, that's not usually the case. Glue will get on there, and glue will stay on there. Oh. Yeah. The rest of them didn't fit quite as snugly as the first one. Darn it. They like to be a pain. And a half. Okay. I'm going to hold that one in place. 
Yes, I probably should have been doing these one at a time. My mistake. Oh, well. We learn from our mistakes. So mistakes are good. I'm going to start holding these in place until they stay. Okay. That's those three. And I'll come back to that because I want to get this other leg on ASAP. Okay, what's gotta make sure what looks most flat. Not about what's more dynamics, about what's more flat looking. because I also want, when I put this down, the most surface area I could possibly get on the bottom of the foot. Now this one, I'm probably going to need to hold it in for a little while, just because these are not perfectly symmetrical. The feet didn't end up being perfectly symmetrical. So, Lou really needs more of a chance to sit, which is fine. It's not a big deal. Not a big deal. If I could just do it like this, that'll work. Hold it in place. Now the next piece I'm probably going to be doing is this on top here. I may not glue that in just quite yet. Because I am probably going to glue this on top first, and then that. Ah! Anyways, uh, these pieces um, I'm not going to put on today. That will be done during painting, or after painting, because I want to get some OSL in there, and it's a lot easier to do OSL on the inside with an airbrush if I uh, leave them detached. And as you can see, now that is together firmly. Okay, I am going to finish putting on these nodes. Then I am going to move on to trying to get the big main body put together. By the way, for those of you who are wondering, no, I will not be. And I don't play Signar. Uh, what I do play in War Machine is Cricks. Love the Cricks. Cricks are awesome looking. And let's just face it, I, I like a lot of people, will go for aesthetics before anything else. And I think Cricks are the coolest looking out of all of the Private Fear Press um, War Machine lines. Okay, and funny enough, because I got this on accident. Well, not on accident, but I didn't expect to actually get this. I do play Circle or Boros. Yeah, or Boros. Circle or Boros. And um, I don't know if I'm going to keep the World Wraith or I'm going to sell it. I would like to keep it. But you no, know, I do. I I need also need to live, so there's there's always that problem in my life. But this, after I paint it, and I am going to paint it so it looks really nice. I want it to look as nice as possible. I'm gonna paint it so it looks really nice. I want it to look as nice as possible. Actually, you know what that. It turned out too bad. I'm still probably going to put something underneath that foot. Whether it just be some green stuff or something. To give it some more stability. But, that is coming out nicely. Coming out nicely. 
Let's see, we're, what, half hour in and getting there? And as far as some other things I do, I do play a bunch of other games, actually. I, uh, my life is full of this. Full of this world. Um, I play Drop Zone Commander, Shaltari Tribes. I also play uh, World Warhammer 40k. I play some Dark Eldars because they're awesome. As well as, obviously, Orcs, which are, is an arm, it's not a personal army, though. And I have a army that was never intended to be a personal army for Warhammer Fantasy Battle, but it's slowly becoming one. Um, I'm building fam vampire accounts for them as well, and I'm going to paint them up nicely as well. But uh, I have to do that between commissions, and I actually pretty consistently have commissions. So as you can imagine, I don't spend quite as much time doing my stuff. Which is fine. I It does not bother me. It does not bother me one bit. Because I love the commission work. Anyways. Uh, this fits in here somehow. Not that way, this way. Okay. Yeah. If you look in there, there's a little little place where this tab fits in, and it fits in there, and it leaves that gap in front for a um, for this piece right here to go into. And we're gonna get that glued in right now. Such a wonderful model. Such a wonderful model. So pretty. Pretty. Um, yeah, even if uh, I don't have the viewers, which, as I said, I still have two now. If Even if I don't have the viewers for this particular live build, I um, will still be, you know, as long as I, in the comments, get a decent amount of responses or something like that. I will do other live builds. It's just it's a matter of if you want to watch me live build or not. If not, I won't be bothered. I well, I won't care. <laughs> not I will not be offended. Not be offended at all. Alrighty then. That's that's in place. So now that we can that we can get this body glued down. Facing forwards. Unfortunately I think if I want this piece to be on there and be um look decent, I gotta have it facing forwards. Because I think it's supposed to it's supposed to connect down here. As you can see as you see here, this is where two are supposed to connect. So unfortunately, I've got basically one direction I can put this guy in. And that is it. Um, do I want to score this a little bit? I went from initially feeling I wouldn't have to do this too much to feeling better about it if I do start doing it. Um, you're not going to see most of the under. You're not going to see really see the underside of this thing. So I, I can score down here too. And the resin, and not worry about it. By the way, be careful with cutting resin. Resin, resin can come off really easily. Careful with scoring, like I said. Careful with scoring. It can come up really easily, and you can end up with 
really, really, really big uh, gaps you didn't, or really, really big chunks taken off you did not mean to. That's my recommendation of the day. Very, very careful cutting resin. It's an awesome material, but it can also be a very, um, that's what's the word I'm looking for, unforgiving material. It's very weak to cutting and cutting motions. Now he's standing at attention! Okay. The next bits I'm going to concentrate on are all these bits, because once I put the arms on, I have a very hard time getting my hands in there. But these are all basically the same, and this just goes in front. In one direction or the other. I don't think it matters. And then I'll put the head on, then the arms will get um, slowly put together, then finally the cannons, and I think these are heat sinks. I'm very fortunate. This guy is very, very uh, nice to just put together and paint. He has got barely anywhere where it's difficult to reach. Partially because of his size, partially because of uh, what he, um, yeah, what's, what's what am I trying to say? Partially because of his size is, is mostly it, and partially because of his posing. Because unlike this, uh, World, World Wrath, that thing, that thing just poses weirdly. Oh, um, oh, another name I play, Malifaux. I do play Malifaux, and I don't want, I want to start playing Infinity. But right now, I uh, got some Malifaux started, a starter set of that going. It's uh, the Thunder. Because they're really, really cool Asian inspired minis. And I love them. I love them greatly. Okay, let's see how well this fits in here. Nicely. Okay, we're going to put glue up in the hole and right on the top of this. Doesn't need a ton of glue. Just enough to make the fit. And that, my friends. So actually, I'm going to put the head on right now because I have no reason not to. Um, let's, see, let's dry fit this. And this is why you dry fit because that's not sitting in there right. And I gotta figure out why. Okay. 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 This is next supposed to stick out that far. It does look deeper than that. Actually, I'm okay with that. I'm just going to uh, flatten out the bottom of his head pace a little bit more, and then I'll be I'll be satisfied. If you notice, I do have two X-Acto knives here, and the reason for that is because I got one that's duller and one that's sharper. Because each of them will serve their will serve a different purpose from time to time. And when I replace heads, I will wait until the sharp one is dull to the point where I am happy with how dull it is. And then I'll replace the old dull one and make the new, the one that was the sharp one, the dull one. And uh, doing that is definitely personal preference. You do not, or you're not required in any way, shape, or form to do that, though. Anyways, putting these on might require the finesse of a. Uh,
tweezers? Maybe. Maybe not. Thinking back, I could... could have done these. Could have done these. Before. I did the legs. But I like building up. Building up. Up, up, up the ziggurat, lickety split. If you get that reference, tell me. There is no prize, not this time. But in the future. Maybe. I would like there to be. I would love to do giveaways. I don't have the money to do a giveaway. Unless I want to give away this Colossal. Do you want to give away this Colossal? I'll tell you what. If you're watching this video... If this video gets, let's say, if this video gets, I'm going to say 2,000 views, um, by the end of June, yeah, I'll say the end of June, I'll do a giveaway on this Colossal, painted and everything. Um, yeah, i would be taking a hit on money, but... You know what? That's fine. And I, I know it sounds like I'm bribing you to uh, to watch this, but um, I will have more content coming, including a painting tutorial for this, a painting tutorial for um, a bunch of Warriors of Chaos stuff that I've got, because uh, one of my clients gave me permission to record painting and stuff. So, um, as I said, I got just got the extension cord, so I'm going to start recording tomorrow. And all over the next two months, I'm going to be recording that stuff, including just the regular Warriors of Chaos model, Throg, um, the ch uh, Chariots uh, with the Gore Beast, a War Shrine. Oh, God, what else do I have? I got, um, he's got chimera, um, Chimeras that I have um, done some conversions on. One of the War Shrines I've done some conversion on as well. Uh, what else I got in the works? Um, I'm doing some river trolls as chaos trolls, because my client prefers the chaos troll appearance over the, or the river troll appearance over the chaos trolls, and I don't blame him for that one. I actually completely agree with him. The regular chaos trolls look very ugly, very un, very unfun. Fugly. They're fugly things. And if you if you know what fugly means, don't need to spell it out. Is it? I'm sorry, sorry, it seems like I'm trying to bribe reviews. I'm not. I'm trying to provide content and help you guys out more than anything. But yeah. But I gotta unload this one way or another because it's not for me. Not for me. And it's gonna be traditional Signar colors, so. You play Signar and you play traditional colors. Don't worry, you can win this and be very happy. Or you can win this and sell it. You've won it. What do I care? It's your model. Okay, now I'm excited to do a giveaway. I'll do a separate video for entry as well. But I will have to admit, if you want to know when the entry is, it's better to subscribe to my channel because it, 
less the uh, contents put on the partner spot slot on the uh, mini wargaming site, which I don't know if it will be. I highlighted it out at the time. I may or may not. It depends. But it is. You'll see it. Otherwise, you won't be able to see it, and how can I... How, <laughs> How can I help people? How can I give this away? How can you get this if you don't know that I'm giving it away? I actually would really love to do this a giveaway on this. And don't tell me 2,000 is really is a reach goal. 2,000 views. I've gotten over 2,000 views on a video that I don't think should have gotten 2,000 views when I was just rambling on about different ideas I had for playing Tyranids in 6th edition. Because I had a friend that was like, ah, man, I sure didn't suck now. <laughs> I'm like, I've got ideas. <laughs> they may not be good ideas, but I have ideas on how I would play them. Okay, next are these little hip joints. Hip thingies. Really cool looking, though. I say There's a lot of really cool looking parts to this model. Those... Ideally fit right in there. And they do. Okay, these are really literally the hardest to reach spots, but even there, even there, they're pretty darn easy to get to. Okay, now I got myself all excited for painting tutorials. I want to do painting tutorials. I want you to see painting tutorials. I love painting tutorials. That's why I want to do them. Because I love watching them so much, I want to do them myself. Give back to the community. Also, since uh, he has the website, I'll probably be putting my tutorials in Schnauzer Face Minis uh, website. As long as he's got that uh, that feature enabled, finally. If you don't know who that is, he was going to do a live stream for Mini Wargaming until, well, frankly, he backed out. Because he tr because he doesn't want to he don't wants to make his his stuff available for everyone to see and at the time it was going to be for vault members only and you know his reasoning was respectable he didn't want to make it something you had to pay to see so he started doing for about five weeks he did a live show on his own channel. And I'm assuming because he didn't have time, that died. Which is fine, because he's a teacher. It was getting close to the end of the year. I don't know his real name. I don't remember his real name. But um, if you don't watch his stuff, I totally watch it. He is amazing with the airbrush. He's definitely an inspiration to me, and I might have to fix something here. He's done a stormwall himself, but he didn't do a full painting tutorial. He just covered uh, weathering, which is the same type of weather, which is something I'm going to be doing with this. But if you want to get an idea of how I'm going to be painting this model, please go go watch his um, stormwall colossal painting tutorial. Very informative, and it's not stuff that I, it's nothing that I didn't already know, but. Very informative, very, very well done. Uh, he knows how to do, like, Photoshop and stuff. Stuff I would, I don't have any idea. <laughs> or um, Premiere, Photoshop, and stuff like that. Stuff I, I have no business trying to touch. Because I have no idea. No idea. I don't know how any of that stuff works. I have it, but I like I have some of those programs, but I, I don't know how. 
in the grand scheme of things how to work them. Okay. These look like they fit in better this way. Which is bad because I, I need that out that way. Uh, and this is why we have box art. Like that? Apparently? Yeah, it looks like it works. Yeah, moving on next, it's just these ball joints. Going to be fitting them into the arm sockets. And... I just made a whole pool of glue in there. Well, that's okay. Okay. I'm happy with that position. I'm going to have to let that set for a second, though. Um... See, I still only have two viewers. Oh, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Oh, well. Makes me sad. But it's okay to be a little sad. Because that means there's brighter things in your future. And I will like to hope there are brighter things in my future. Now, I was going to share my live stream on my own Facebook page, and I have no idea where it's disappeared to. Eh, that worked. Okay, that's in there. It is in there. And I am going to borrow the box art again to look at the other one. Okay. They face kind of up, so it's going, it's kind of like this. The varying degrees of whatever hood. By the way, I know what I'm saying, so please, for the love of whatever you, deities you believe in, do not say things that are bad. And I pulled out a piece here. I would like to. I would like to keep my channel clean. Fam or, you know, family friendly. Because one thing this community doesn't need is a bunch of children who are interested in the hobby. Go searching for stuff about it online and come across a bunch of people who are being vulgar and nasty. It's not a good way of getting people into a hobby. In fact, it's the wrong way of getting yourself into the hobby. It is the or wrong way to get other people into the hobby, I should say. Is, this is very much a hobby I think kids sh can get into, kids should be able to get into, without worries. It's a very rewarding hobby. For most people. It's very rewarding for me, not because I make money doing it. 
de I mean, that's definitely nice, but it's rewarding for me. Anyways, this guard isn't here. I'm going to have it down more because I want to make it look like um, it's part of his stride and the arms are swinging. With the stride. Maybe even look like it's running. Oh, that'd be so cool. Look at make it look like this big thing's running at you. It'd be so super cool. Oh, before, by the way, before I started uh, putting this together, I washed my hands. Why? Be because you should. Because I already washed this model. Uh, and if you wash your hands, you'll get all the oils that are built up through the day or last hour or whatever off of your hands and off of the model. And the more of those oils you get on your model, the harder it is going to be to get primer and paint to stick to your model. So please, wash your hands. You're doing yourself your model, and everyone else a favor. Also, it helps keep you germ-free. Isn't that awesome? Okay, eventually, this arm's going to stick. <laughs> I have glue in there. Eventually, this arm's going to stick. It's one thing I do hate about doing this. Sometimes, you just need to hold something in place for a minute or two. Until, because <laughs> that just happens, until enough glue sets for you to be able to let go. Got stuck on there or something. Unless there's just not that much surface in there grabbing, in which case we can correct that by shaving off some thing. Some. Because it's not a pace you need to see. You can make it ugly. You can ugly it up a little bit. All right. That looks like it's going to stick. I'm going to let that set, though, for a little bit. And I'm going to continue talking. Because we're almost done. And I like to talk. Uh, so, as far as what I've been doing lately, I said I've got a lot of commissions. I've got an entire... Warriors of Chaos army, including, okay, what was the list? Uh, Lord on a Dragon, and it's the old metal dragon, and that's a pain in the butt to put together, because you got to pin all those things. That's okay, I'll do it. I'll get it done. Uh, three Chimeras in total, uh, each of them being done as either Nurgle, a Zinch, or a Corn, because my client does not like Slanish. I've got three chariots, one gore beast, one reg uh, one gore beast, two regulars. I've got two war shrines actually. Uh, one's going to be Nurglish, one's going to be Slanish. Uh, I've got a bunch of juggernaut uh, knights on juggernauts, I think. Uh, ten of those. I've got um, two sets of five war um, wars of chaos knights. I'm going to be doing a bunch of freehand on the banners. I've got 50 Warriors of Chaos, the new models, um, with a with the replace the heads of 25 of them that have uh, Bloodthirster heads, Bloodletter, Bloodthirster, whatever the little corn demon troop models are. Um, but they, those heads replaces uh, helmets, and I'm doing 25 as those corn, and then the other 25 as Zinch. I got four character models. Um, one of them are corn. One of them's corn. Two are Zinch. One's Nurgle. Um, th and looking at them, they're very obvious which one's which. Uh, what else do I got? He's, he's, this guy gave me a lot of stuff to do. I got a sorcerer of Zinch. I got it done. Um, this is a Throg. Three trolls. I don't know why only three. 
Uh, it's, from what I understand, they're better in a pack of six. But I don't play Warriors of Chaos, so I really don't know. Uh, is there anything else he had for me? I think that's it. But, you know, as you see, that's a really big commission. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to take me a little while to get it done, and I don't paint like Blue Table Painting does, where I um, can grind out ten guys an hour. But there's a reason for that. I um, do not like to dry brush everything that much. Not to the degree that they seem to. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It is a very quick and efficient way of getting models on the tabletop. But they also can suffer in quality. Oh, down. And when I paint, I at least try to aim for their level 3 to 4 on every, almost every model I do or what they would consider level 3 to 4 on what they do, and I try to do it for cheaper than the way they would do. Even though it takes me longer. Not that it's competition, because I love blue table painting. I would love to work for them one day, actually. But um, I've got to improve the present skills I have and the other skills I'm trying to learn presently, I have got to improve them before I would want to go do something like work for them. Okay, that's got to save that set a minute. Um, I'd love to be answering questions right now, but apparently there's no one asking them. Oh, well. Oh, well. As I said, possible giveaway. Got a chance at it. It's entirely up to you, YouTube. But, you know, no worries. If, um, you know. Deadline passes, and you ha and uh, you know. Deadline passes. It's definitely not going to get. Uh, um. Given away as a prize. I still very much have the option. Well, it will be on eBay, then. Then it will be on eBay. I said I have to unload it somehow. And eBay is going to be the best option for that. Okay, I may have screwed up a little bit <laughs> putting these arms in. Oh well. I think this is as long as we're on there, anyone's going to care. I, I mean, I don't care. Just as long as they're on there, I do not care at all. Okay, because I'm not going to be able to get that arm out of there now.
Actually, the solution is simpler than I'm making it. Because nothing says it has to sit in that hole. <laughs> and that's the truth. Now, isn't it? Just as long as it's got surface to connect with, it's going to connect to something. Like I said, nothing says it has to sit in that hole. So what I'm going to do is drop some glue on this side. Stick it right there. That's going to stay. As long as I don't mess with it too much. And that side's fine how it is. Because they look upright. They look correct. And I've got the arms posed the way I want them. Kind of the mid-jog. I'm going to get you pose. Because I'd rather have a more dynamic pose anyways. Which I am going to... You see the holes, because you could put them either way. Um, I'm going to fill those gaps in after the I'm done putting this together. And we're already that deep in. Okay. We're almost done. This will wrap up very shortly. Got its wrists on, the fists on. Okay. Okay, I'll reattach that in a second. <laughs> okay. Oh, I'm actually, I mean, I didn't even put glue on there. It looks like it was dry. That would be why that just fell off. Um, I'm going to leave the rest alone. I'm going to put the, attach the rest of these before that. Uh, these are turrets that go in front. These are cannons that go here or here. I'm going to place them out separately or in different spots so that they are different. <laughs> Foremost, I'm going to put these heat sinks on the back. Because I'm pretty sure these are heat sinks. Like, um... Or not. I don't know. They might be power cells as well, for all I know. But they look more like they're shooting out for, um... purpose of... Ex of... like, exhaust. So... If you actually know the answer, like, if you know what those are, please tell me. I'm very I'm curious to learn. I've not bought the colossal book, at least not as of yet, so I don't know these things. I I'm always always willing to learn more about the game, the characters, stuff like that. That's why I enjoy watching Warboss Tay so much, because he knows the fluff. 
he knows the fluff. May as well call him Fluffy McFlufferton sometimes, because he is he is a fluff man. In fact, I am going to I am going to leave this as a video response to one of his things because I'm nice like that, and I'm going to link link his and Schnauzer faces. videos post it <laughs> post production if I am capable of it. If I'm not capable of it, that's really unfortunate. I'll be sad. I will I will truly be sad. Saddened by that. So you see we're moving on to the most delicate and difficult parts of this this process. Okay. This shouldn't take too much finagling. Mainly because these are a very nice, nice fit. Now, there is a little bit of flashing on the inside of Avast virus database has been updated. Thank you, Avast. Thank you. So there's a little bit of flashing still on the inside of the hand on that one that I apparently missed. Um, but only, only a little bit. Only a little bit. Okay. And I can just leave him on his back for now. Yeah. He's assembled to the point I don't have to worry. Got anything on that back yet? And finally, as he's the resistance, we will be getting these turrets in place. Sorry, I was just like suddenly concentrating on glue, gluing. Yeah, eventually that will hold. And it is. Hooray. As I said, we are, we are nearly completed, my friends. We are nearly done. In just another couple of minutes, this is going to be a well put or a uh, I'm not gonna say well put together, but a completed, ready for priming, Signar Stormwall Colossus. Colossal. I keep on saying Colossus like the X Men character. Pardon me, I'm going to not gonna hold him up because he's not quite dry yet, but there he is. He, uh, that is the Stormwall. Isn't he awesome? Please like, comment, and subscribe for more content. This is Brian from War Painting Services, or on YouTube as I own as War Painter. And I am going to call it a day. Thank you for watching. Stormwall thanks you for watching.